In this lesson, I'll show you how to find the coefficient of friction on a spinning surface for an object. The question reads, a one ounce gold coin is placed on a turntable turning at 33 and a third RPM. What is the coefficient of friction between the coin and the turntable if the maximum radius before the coin slips is 0 0.14 meters? Let's begin with an illustration. So let's take a cross section of the turntable. Let's say that this is the surface that's spinning and here's the coin, and that is the center of the turntable. As you can see, this coin will be exerting a force downwards due to gravity. In addition, since this surface is spinning, centripetal force is also happening. In order for the coin to stay still, the force it exerts on the surface due to gravity must equal to the centripetal force directed at the center. So with that being said, we can use Newton's second law to write an expression for the force due to gravity. And Newton's second law is force is equal to mass times acceleration. I'll replace A with G for gravity. So we have M times G. And remember, the coefficient of friction is acting on this force in particular. So I'll represent the coefficient of friction with the Greek letter mu, and I'll multiply that to this statement. So we have three factors here, m times g times mu. And as I mentioned, that is equal to the centripetal force. The centripetal force can be modeled using Newton's second law, where I have f is equal to the mass of that object times the radial acceleration or the centripetal acceleration which I'll denote as AC or A sub RAD, radial acceleration. The acceleration of an object that is spinning can be modeled using the formula V to the power of 2 for velocity over R which stands for radius. So this is equal to mass and replacing a sub c with this expression, we have v to the power of 2 over r. Things have become a lot more clear once we've created this formula. The mass can be replaced with the mass of the object being 1 ounce. And normally, we don't work with ounce when we're finding the force in newtons, because newtons is kilograms times meters over seconds squared. But because we have an m here and an m here, they'll cancel out anyway, so m is not important. What is important is filling out G, which is 9.8 meters per second squared, times mu, which is what we're looking for. The velocity we don't have, and I'll show you how to find that in a moment, but the radius we do have. And it's given in the question as 0 0.14 meters. The units match, that's good that it's in meters. It has to be in meters and in seconds when dealing with newtons. Now, how do we find V so that ultimately we can solve for mu? V is velocity. And velocity is a measure of distance over time. So meters per second. What we are told in the question is that the turntable turns at 33 and a third RPM. So 33 and a third. I don't like working with mixed fractions, so I'll change this into an improper fraction by multiplying 3 times 33 plus 1. That's the trick. 3 times 33 is 99 plus 1 is 100 over 3 RPM, revolutions per minute. Let me write that down for you. So this is revolutions per minute. Essentially, you can even say that it's 100 revolutions per every 3 minutes. So we need to make revolutions per minute into meters per second. First, we'll convert minutes into seconds. There are one minute for every 60 seconds. So this minute and this minute will cancel out. To get rid of the revolutions, remember there is one revolution per two pi radians. And there's a reason why I'm using radians because it's somewhat of a unitless number. If I use this conversion ratio, I'll write down one revolution at the bottom and at the top, I'll write down 2 pi radians. You don't even need to write down radians. The explanation as to why is shown on the screen right now. Unit and that unit will cancel out. And don't forget that there's a S here for seconds. Let's go ahead and multiply all this out. We have 100 times 2 pi 
Let's use our calculator. Should give you 200 pi, but let's find out what that number actually is. So 100 times 2 pi is 200 pi divided by 3 times 60. And we end up with approximately 3.49. So 3 decimal 49 radians per 1 second. All we have to do from here is multiply this by the radius of the turntable, and that was 0 0.14. So 0 0.14 meters. And we end up with, multiplying this now by 0 0.14, we get 0 0.49. So 0 0.49 radians times meters per second. Like I said, you don't even need to write down radians and you get the velocity as 0 0.49 meters per second. Okay, so now that we've done the dirty work, we can place that number right into there, and I'll rewrite my equation, 9.8 mu is equal to 0 0.49 raised to the power of two over 0 0.14, and now all we do is the math. We divide both sides by 9.8, so that cancels out with that. And dividing this by 9.8, you can just place the 9.8 underneath here. So mu is equal to what you see on the right. Now taking the number 0 0.49 and raising it to the power of 2, divided by 0 0.14 times 9.8, now you saw in the calculation I wrote down 0 0.49, I rounded, I used the rounded number to proceed with the calculation, but normally you just keep the unrounded version until the very end. So just letting you know that, and we get a coefficient of friction that is 0 0.0175, and this is unitless. Keep in mind that 0 0.175 to the correct number of significant figures should be 0 0.18. So I forgot to mention that. But now you know how to find the coefficient of friction on a spinning surface.